Thank you, George, for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, present uh, this paper with uh, my co-authors uh, Eugene and Suresh. I'm very happy uh, <clears throat> to be here. Uh, Peter, hi, by the way, happy birthday. And uh, well, uh, let me, much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so here is a paper and uh, it's a nice collaboration that we had uh, with uh, Eugene and Suresh and uh, we had, uh, I mean, uh, a nice, uh, uh, a nice uh, journey doing this paper. It's about control of an epidemic with endogenous treatment capability under popular discontent and social fatigue. Well, I do not need probably to present uh, Eugene and Suresh. Uh, Suresh is very popular in optimal control and differential games and other many other areas. Eugene uh, is a specialist in optimal control. Uh, and uh, well, uh, they were very, very, I mean, uh, we had a very nice, uh, nice collaboration on this project, which was not very easy, by the way, especially because uh, things were evolving so rapidly at the time where we started to work on this. So the point is that <clears throat> we, this paper will not save the, the world from COVID-19, but it might provide uh, some uh, insights, probably, uh, the structure of the model is uh, rather interesting and uh, also the calibration is not, is, I mean, is probably properly done, I think. And uh, we provide with some uh, interesting insight regarding optimal policy of control of uh, this uh, epidemic. Uh, there will be many questions that I will not be able to, to answer. And uh, my uh, colleagues, uh, Eugene and Suresh, will probably be able better than me to handle them. So uh, first, indeed, uh, I will introduce the topic and then uh, uh, in, well, should formulate the models and finally turn to the results. Let me be clear, the model is not easy to handle. Uh, technically, it was not, uh, I mean, it took uh, a while even to get numerical results because <clears throat> we needed to be sure that the, uh, the solution, the, the local uh, optimum was, was uh, actually uh, satisfied. The conditions for optimal, uh, for local optimum were satisfied. Uh, which is not easy, and at the same time, uh, having uh, many uh, trials to be sure that the, the set of parameters wa was well chosen. And then we will conclude. The conclusions are not, uh, how to say, uh, uh, extraordinary, but uh, I mean, uh, they, they show that uh, maybe one of the most important problem that is faced by uh, countries, by populations, in this kind of situation is probably the policymakers' inability to manage uh, these kind of situations. Of course, there are other problems, but I mean, that's probably the main, the main issue, in fact. And uh, then uh, it has to do with the uh, ill preparedness. It has to do with the insufficient valuation of, uh, uh, of lives uh, lost and uh, this is something that uh, we will uh, try to, to show here. Okay, so you all know the dynamics of the COVID-19 epidemics. And now here we have a few countries that are presented as examples. And you can see that some countries, I didn't show the US, uh, I didn't show uh, Brazil because otherwise all the other remaining countries will not be visible on this figure. So you can see that for instance here, some countries uh, do better than others. You see that here, United Kingdom is not very fortunate, but you see Norway is actually a European country it remains very low. Actually, it's a, the, the, the control of the policy is rather, I mean, very satisfactory. And you can see that uh, Vietnam also is a country where things are going rather well. Uh, so that's, uh, there, there is a big difference uh, between uh, countries, and this has to do with policymakers' ability to counter the, the epidemic. And uh, the problem that uh, <clears throat> actually 
was uh, considered here is this ability uh, is uh, twofold. It actually is based on the fact that uh, there is a, a problem with preparedness to counter the disease. The, the policymakers were not prepared in many countries, except in some Asian countries where they have indeed some uh, experience, previous experience, which uh, enabled them to, to take this with the, with the sufficient uh, uh, preparation. And also lack of benevolence. Lack of benevolence means that actually, well, uh, the people at the beginning were, um, the, the policymakers were suggesting that probably there would be people that would die and that's actually the normal course of uh, life. And uh, you can probably remember what has been uh, <clears throat> claimed by the president, uh, previous president of the United States, or maybe the current president of Brazil, there would be, uh, there would be dead. So I'm sorry about this. And that's all you need to accept the situation. This is probably related to lack of benevolence. And, uh, and what we what we think here is that uh, in these countries, we had, we, can, we could observe a cost centered policy, uh, which actually was seeking to accommodate the disease. And uh, well, uh, the idea was that probably developing herd immunity against COVID-19 would would uh, make uh, would make uh, would would be the, the right policy to counter counter the disease, but this was not the case. Actually, herd immunity is still out of reach for many countries, and then uh, well, uh, the problem is that if you decide to reach to go to to this. Uh, toward this direction, then you might put uh, unbearable pressures on the healthcare infrastructure and uh, also have uh, uh, levels of uh, losses of, uh, death, of uh, lives, which would be impossible to manage for, for policymakers. I mean, this is something we can say, oh, today we can probably uh, uh, say that finally, uh, Donald Trump uh, uh, was not reelected because of uh, his uh, inability to, to, to manage this, this disease. And that's something which actually uh, uh, makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. And I'm quite sure that many, many policymakers will experience the same failure in, uh, during the, the, the next forthcoming elections. So the point here is that when you start with uh, something which is wrong, then you whatever you do afterward to correct the situation, then it's, it's too late. You have a hysteresis effect. And this has an, an impact, uh, which is that it exacerbates a popular discontent. The people are unhappy, the population is unhappy with the way uh, the, the, the disease was managed. And for this, they actually, they can use a, a number of levers to to, to, to attack uh, policymakers, uh, in, including in, 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 in justice. So that's something which we have to, which we have to take that we have to take into account here, uh, uh, along with another important phenomenon, phenomenon, which is the growing social fatigue related to the uh, uh, non-therapeutic efforts uh, deployed by the policymakers to fight the disease, and we actually know all, all about us. I mean, are, uh, have experienced the situation of seeing people outside without a ma medical mask, and uh, that are not very careful in preventing the, the contagion. So that's that's something which happens and should actually uh, be growing over time. So what we do in this paper is to try to characterize a control policy of a silent epidemic in a given country, which means that silent means that uh, 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 asymptotic uh, uh, cases are also uh, uh, vectors of uh, contagion of this disease. Well, the point is that many papers have started to think about the problem by considering that the uh, healthcare infrastructures were actually exogenously <clears throat> uh, given and that uh, the number of, uh, um, of uh, contaminated or of ill, of sick people should not uh, go above this level. In this paper, we make a slightly different assumption and consider that the health infrastructures 
are actually endogenously uh, built up, in fact. And so what we do here is that we consider both non-therapeutic and therapeutic lever levers to counter the disease. And especially we consider isolation of infected in the individuals um, uh, regarding uh, on, on the side of non-therapeutic efforts. Uh, but the most important point is that what we do is that we make a comparison between uh, mobility restrictions, which we call lockdown, and uh, the neutralization of the chains of transmission, which uh, actually is, is about securing social interaction, which means that you still keep the interaction between people. I mean, you do not restrict the mobility of people, but you try to make it more secure. And that's uh, what we are going to compare. Actually, we are going to compare these two levers in this paper. Um, then um, uh, the idea here, of course, is to design an optimal pattern for therapeutic and non-therapeutic interventions in this case. <clears throat> Sorry. OK, um, um, in, in, in the, po the point that um, is uh, most important is that actually we could look at the literature, the existing literature regarding the models. Now, nowadays, you have thousands of papers related to the control of this disease. But at the time that we started, there were not so many published papers. And those that were actually existing were uh, not considering so many dimensions and, and control variables. And that's, that's uh, our one of our contribution in this paper. So <clears throat> uh, what, we, what we are going to do regarding the, uh, the, the, the therapeutic uh, intervention is that we are going to simply uh, um, introduce uh, a number of uh, uh, variables which are related on the one hand to the building up of healthcare uh, infrastructures to handle this problem, to treat uh, 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 sick people, those who have symptoms precisely. And uh, also we consider effort treatments. These are two different uh, uh, levers uh, of, uh, for reducing the, 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 the disease. Well, regarding the comparison between uh, mobility restrictions, lockdown, and uh, uh, secured, secured social interactions, of course, many, many examples could be found uh, in practice, and you can actually see that uh, countries that actually uh, um, alternated both activities, both options, sorry. Well, uh, still there are discussions regarding the, the, the effectiveness of these options. And uh, well, we, we are going to see whether one is better than the other based on two important criteriums, mainly effectiveness on the one hand, effectiveness in reducing, pre preventing infections and, and saving lives on the one hand, and efficiency, I mean, uh, minimizing the cost of preventing infections and reducing lives. And um, sorry, saving lives, sorry. Okay, so this, um, this uh, <clears throat> option of uh, securing social, social interaction can be illustrated in many, in many ways. It was a nice paper by John Colkins uh, in Politico, I think, uh, John Well, he actually claimed that maybe uh, it would be better to, instead of uh, imposing lockdown, uh, introducing secure social interactions. And in many, he provides many, provides many, many possibilities, many uh, uh, um, uh, examples of what could be done in, in this regard. Okay, regarding lockdown, we know that it's very effective. I mean, in uh, reducing saving lives, you see, for instance, the, the first lockdown in March uh, uh, in Europe actually saved about, seems to have saved about 3.1 million lives in 11 uh, European countries, which means that it, it worked rather well. The problem, as you know, is that it is very, very uh, expensive. So. Um, we need to take into account of the fact of this growing fatigue. Uh, and the issue was, by the way, introduced recently in a paper by, uh, by Peter and Stefan, which are uh, among us today, and, and maybe Gustav. Um, uh, so it's about actually the fact that uh, these non-therapeutic measure, measures, especially lockdown, is, I mean, you cannot accommodate for this for a long time. You cannot stay for uh, six months of lockdown, it's impossible. You cannot actually come with such prescription today saying, okay, we close everything for six months or one year. It doesn't make sense. 
Otherwise, you need to take into account other, other uh, dimensions. So what we do here is that we look at the fact whether actually um, it is better to have uh, to, 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 to opt for mobility restrictions or securing social interactions uh, with regard to non-therapeutic intervention related social fatigue. Okay, this is a very long introduction and uh, um, it just um, actually um, uh, precise the, 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 the contributions. So another contributions, uh, contribution here lies with the fact that uh, the <clears throat> we need to account for the popular uh, uh, discontent. Well, most uh, used uh, uh, models in this uh, area are well known. Uh, these are papers by Kermak and McKendrick, which were republished in uh, maybe 2001 or two. And um, these models actually uh, are the Sears models. And there are many variants, of course. And um, initially, I was not sure Personally, that it was the we had a big discussion with Suresh regarding the the, the use of uh, should we have this one or uh, the Sears model, and finally uh, it seems that our model has some merits. Uh, it's probably I mean it is equivalent in terms of uh, patterns uh, obtained uh, uh, with respect to the Sears model, and it's probably in terms of control probably a little bit a uh, little bit uh, simpler, but not too much. That's not the main feature. But anyway, it's something a little. Uh, it's a variant of the Sears model. Okay, uh, so that's that's uh, that will make the, a difference. Looking at the literature, we actually have a number of papers published uh, on, on this topic, uh, the control of an epidemic, and you can see that uh, uh, Suresh uh, started very early, also uh, controlling uh, with the control of this uh, this um, problem. And then uh, there are many papers which are published. Uh, some are um, based on simple models, one or two control variables, others with six, seven, eight, uh, uh, sorry, state equations, um, uh, and other with six, seven, eight uh, state equations. Of course, in this case, you cannot solve analytically any model. So uh, this, you can simply get uh, uh, some uh, numerical uh, insights from this. Uh, recently, a paper by Colkins, Peter, Gustav, uh, Stefan, maybe Andrea, and Dieter, maybe also. Um, uh, and uh, this paper actually uh, also included something important, which is the cost of disease related uh, to that as part of the trade-off. So you can see that we have here the five dimensions, five features that are included in our model, which is a finite time horizon model and it, is, it, is, it has its importance. These five features are not uh, uh, taken uh, exhaustively by the existing literature. So for instance, the fact that the treatment effectiveness is contingent upon health infrastructure uh, level, which means that we have the endogenous building up of these infrastructures. And then, uh, the fact that uh, the <clears throat> disease-related debt are, are taken into account uh, 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 in the economic trade-off uh, considered growing popular discontent, growing social fatigue, and also comparison between mobility restrictions and, uh, and secure social interaction. Our paper does uh, all this. Some papers uh, actually consider one, maybe mostly the cost of disease-related debt. So this uh, this literature is quite interesting, but well, to be to be clear, uh, there are some papers that are based on kind of uh, simulation and just without any optimal control. You just set uh, the control at a certain level, and then you 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 evaluate, you assess the consequences. Other are based on. Uh, two big models or two small models. And that's uh, with the limited number of, most of the time, the number of control variable, variables is very limited. <clears throat> okay, so here what we do is that uh, we consider, of course, uh, this, uh, this uh, important uh, feature, which is the, the, the fact that uh, the, uh, the policy makers level of preparedness, uh, as well as its level of benevolence uh, in the in the in the make you put it in the balance uh, and then it has an impact as we will see okay 
Then uh, another, the other point I said that already in uh, the literature uh, about uh, uh, the fact that it doesn't always take into account the cost of debt, that this is something important. Uh, another <clears throat> important feature again is the fact that yeah, the policymaker Ill, the policymakers' uh, ill preparedness and lack of benevolence uh, jointly contribute to the uh, uh, to the society's inability to counter the disease and the, the epidemic. Sorry, and it, it, this engenders popular discontent. And how do we represent this popular discontent? Actually, we used very simple means in this case. Uh, we could, of course, uh, make a more sophisticated modeling. But in this case, instead of introducing a discounting function regarding the uh, objective, uh, discounting function regarding the objective criterion, we actually uh, considered the fact that uh, the cost, the disease-related social cost was growing over time uh, over time because of uh, precisely because of this uh, popular discontent so we use a time de dependent compounding function instead of usual the usual ways to 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 assume a, a discounting function this would not work discounting function means uh, that uh, well, you have to do it with infinite time horizon, but with finite time horizon, it doesn't make much sense because actually it means that uh, as time goes by, the people finally, they accommodate with the, the situation and they are more and more complacent with respect to the policymakers. It's not really the case, actually. You, actually the problem is that the people um, experience this situation uh, very badly and then they are more and more uh, uh, unhappy with it. So uh, uh, assuming discounting means that you assume popular complacency. And this is not something that uh, actually could be done. Uh, the, the fact that we use a compounding function uh, is based on um, some papers, especially a paper by Nordhaus in 1974 in Review of Economic Studies, where actually, while we get closer, uh, close to the, closer to the election day, the policymaker uh, sees that actually the, 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 the impact, the utility, social utility should actually uh, be taken into account in a growing way. It means that if unemployment is too high and so inflation or so, then to not be re-elected. So popularity depends on that. And that's more or less the philosophy underlying this assumption. Okay. So here we consider this, that disease-related social costs compound to make them along with postponement, postponed decisions and their related outcomes increasingly costly. Okay. So uh, this is an important point, by the way, because when you want to assume over finite time horizon that well, uh, there is uh, no discounting, sorry, no, um, uh, no compounding function, then you make a result with situation where actually the, the lockdown can be very long, maybe six, one year of lockdown, even at a low, low intensity, it's, it's impossible to, I mean, this is something that you need to have it actually to have the uh, actions uh, uh, be taken as soon as possible. And this is something it, which means that actually, if you don't, do not do it now, it will be more and more difficult to do it uh, afterward. Another important point is related to, to, to the fact that we, com we compare mobility restriction and secure social interaction. We have a number of papers that show actually the impact of this. And uh, we have only a simulation-based study by Ferguson uh, and Carters in 2020 that made this comparison. It's not an optimal control model. And uh, we, what we are doing in this paper is that we compare. Finally, uh, uh, we also consider social fatigue through a time-dependent compounding function. And this to make, to make it more and more cost costly to leverage this, uh, this uh, to, to use this instrument, which means that actually uh, they, 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 they give rise to social, uh, growing social fatigue over time. It is a, a simple way to uh, consider that this instrument cannot be used for too, too long time interval. Okay, so the two, the two questions, three questions, uh, apparently there are three, but uh, let me just uh, simplify. We need to identify which non-therapeutic policy option between mobility restriction and secure social interaction is more, more effective in minimizing the respective effects 
of policymakers failings and related popular discontent here it is a very important point actually when you have policymaker inability to manage the disease which means which is based again on ill preparedness and lack of benevolence regarding the loss of lives then uh, this may engender popular discontent so we consider the case where it it it, uh, it, it engenders this i mean it, it comes with popular discontent and the case also where it doesn't come with Okay, social fatigue and policymaker of disregard of policy discontent, because of course, we may have a situation where people are unhappy, but the policymaker do not see it very well. Actually, we, we, have, we can see this in France, huh, for instance, that's, uh, that's something very, I mean, that's an experience, but maybe also in the United States and on many other countries. Okay, so the model is the following. Actually, we consider that the number of individuals in a country is denoted by A at time zero, which is equal to one. And all these individuals are susceptible to be infected uh, with, the, 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 with the, this uh, uh, disease. Uh, as time goes by, we have actually three categories which are considered. Uh, so asymptomatic cases, which are denoted by A1, uh, symptomatic cases, A2, and convalescent cases, A3. Okay, so all three categories are supposed to be uh, infectious, including the asymptomatic and the convalescent cases. Uh, asymptomatic, there were some discussions, but uh, well, today we can say that uh, actually asymptomatic people contribute uh, in a very significant way, a significant way in this contagion process. So you see the number of active cases is given by the sum of AI, uh, and the remaining susceptible individuals is A minus uh, sum of AI. So the uncontrolled model uh, is this way, you see, the, these uh, remaining susceptible, they can be infected, uh, uh, especially, um, uh, but uh, first let me precise one thing, which is that actually this uh, remaining, yes, okay, I will say it later. Okay, asymptomatic, uh, the, these remaining susceptible can be infected, they become asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic. Uh, and then you have some of them which actually recover, they become resilient. Huh? Uh, so they are resilient because of the symptoms or, or maybe simply the, the, the impact on their health is not that uh, uh, significant. So you see Psi is this rate uh, parameter of uh, recovery or resilience, we call it resilience here. Then some of asymptomatic become symptomatic at the rate of beta, which is also a positive constant. And then uh, this beta, among this beta, some people die. So we have the delta, uh, which uh, actually characterizes this uh, parameter, dead parameter. And uh, <clears throat> also you have uh, some spontaneous recovery or resilience of symptomatic people that become convalescent. And during this convalescence, of course, they all still are. Uh, are uh, and you have also something important here, which is that you have the rate of relapse. Okay, so this C is actually for the rate of the parameter uh, uh, rate of relapse of convalescent to symptomatic. This is something which is more and more important and more and more documented. We can see that many people comes back, come back, sorry, to the hospitals a few months after being, being, having been hospitalized with the same symptoms. And this is not something which uh, actually it's not simply a psychological uh, or mental uh, issue. It's really uh, something uh, serious. So this resilient convalescent, uh, they get a proportion of them get immunity and uh, some of them do not get immunity, you see. And this that's the same for asymptomatic. Some of them get immunity and some not. OK, and those that get uh, that uh, have been symptomatic post symptom immunity is in general documented as being greater than uh, asymptomatic uh, uh, immunity. OK, so that it works this way simply and the model is given in this simple way you see with four simple. I mean, of course, not that simple, but uh, you have four uh, uh, um, four uh, state equations in, in this. You see that the, the number of susceptible decreases with the with the. the the death of uh, symptomatic uh, people, and these are the people that uh, that get uh, some some uh, that get some immunity. Okay, so that uh, uh, finally we do not consider, of course, uh, a, a natural growth rate of the population, natural death, because actually have a finite time horizon model. This would have been uh, maybe more uh, appropriate in, in finite time horizon model. 
So you see here uh, the um, the contagion rate is actually given in this simple way. Huh? You see that this alpha, the contagion rate parameter. These are the active cases that contaminate the remaining susceptible. This is for those that recover uh, without symptoms. This those that turn uh, that turn symptomatic here. They come here, and finally you have those that die, those that spontaneously reco uh, recover uh, after a symptom, and then those that uh, uh, that uh, actually, uh, after being convalescent, you see this uh, phi H1, uh, H2, sorry, there, there is a little uh, typo here, but it's not too bad. Let me just, okay. Okay, so here uh, uh, you see here this uh, these people they recover here and finally uh, this, you have this resilience rate parameter theta of uh, convalescent and those that relapse they come back to the previous category actually okay so that's uh, the model uh, with no control and we need to calibrate it at least it would be an important contribution that we have a calibrated model we consider that the, the time horizon is uh, equal to capital T 180 days and uh, we introduce a number of important uh, elements from the medical literature uh, well in this case what we see is r0 the basic reproduction ratio the number of people that in, are infected by one infectious uh, person uh, is comprised in the literature between 2.2 and 3.28. I'm talking about the first uh, virus, uh, um, uh, um, the first one, not, not uh, the, 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 the subsequent uh, new mutated uh, uh, ones. So uh, this actually means that if you want to have uh, uh, to have, uh, uh, I mean, if you want to have immunity, you need to have uh, between uh, 54 and 70 percent of the people which could be infected, which of course would be a crazy situation. So we make a, a, a average among these two values, and we choose 2.74. Okay, the methodology used here can be actually extended to R0 greater than this; and it doesn't make uh, any difference. So here you see, with this R0, it means that 63 percent of the population is likely to be infected. Now, uh, what we do is that uh, <clears throat> we consider the pro proportion of asymptomatic cases uh, in the literature. Uh, we see that we have a wide interval, uh, and, uh, but uh, according to some important, an important study, uh, which was published in 2020, then we have a, a rate which is uh, comprised between 40 and 45 percent, uh, which seems to make a large consensus. So we actually make an assumption that Psi is equal to 0.4. Then uh, beta uh, is actually for the, uh, the uh, uh, average time during, is the inverse of average time during which asymptomatic cases become symptomatic. So in general, five days. So this is equal to 0.2. Regarding the case fatality ratio, the pro proportion of uh, people that die uh, divided by the community of confirmed cases to date, symptom symptomatic cases, of course, uh, you can confirm only if you are symptomatic. This is uh, actually written in this way. So in general, it's comprised between 2.3 and, and 7.2 percent. But uh, we need to correct uh, by taking into account the fact that uh, to adjust this CFR based on uh, 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 the fact that uh, in the closed pop population we have uh, different values. And then we need to correct uh, th these estimates, which actually turn to be 1.1 and 3.3 percent. So we use a, we consider the average of these values and we get 2.2 for the CFR. So what does it mean? It means that the calibrated model should lead to, to give these patterns. At the, at, the, at the end of the planning horizon, we should observe a CFR, a CFR of 2.2%. This is very close to what we can see from uh, existing important existing studies. Okay, so phi is equal to one divided by eight. And then this is in uh, accordance with the existing literature. And finally, we use uh, XI, the relapsing rate parameter as equal to 0 0.01. We're not very sure about this value, but it seems to be okay. So we computed the alpha and the delta based on the fact that the CFR is 2.2% and R0 2.74%, and we get this, this parameter values, okay? So now we can actually compare and see, you see, depending on whether there is a full herd immunity or no herd immunity. Herd immunity means that when you get the sickness, then afterward you, 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 you are immunized for a few, 
for uh, some months, maybe, or some years, depending on the disease. So we start with small incidence, uh, initial, inc I mean, small, not that small incidence rate. Uh, uh, and uh, we consider there are no symptomatic and convalescent cases at uh, time zero. And then you see that the patterns are quite different depending on whether you, ha you have herd immunity or not, no herd immunity. And also depending on the, uh, the, this, uh, the herd immunity, you see ETA, uh, then you may have uh, actually uh, uh, a very different uh, uh, evolution of the R0. So you see here for, for a full herd immunity, the R0 decreases after two months, two months and a half, uh, one month and a half, very rapidly below one. Below one, then it means that the disease will disappear. So, but small uh, herd immunity here with the 10% or 0.1 means that still the disease will, will, will extend over time, you see. So we can be actually more or less sure that the model is well calibrated because we show that we have exactly the same trends that we would have in the Sears model. I made the comparison that there are strict equivalence between the trends. And also the other point is that we have uh, uh, patterns which are very close to what could be observed in many cases in many countries. So for instance, the infection fatality rate uh, at conversions uh, with the, our model to 0.7%, which is close to, to the point estimate obtained in the, the, the literature, 0 0.68. I can give you other examples. Um, and uh, also the, the community rate of asymptomatic case is, uh, uh, sorry, the, the proportion of resilient case uh, tends to 95%, which also can, we can find examples in this case, uh, I mean, uh, uh, concrete examples of, uh, of, of this, okay? We, uh, by the way, we have chosen ETA1, the uh, rate parameter for uh, asymptomatic immunity and uh, ETA2 for symptomatic immunity to be uh, different. So we, we, we said point, uh, ETA1.25, ETA2.5. Okay, so now uh, the model uh, with controls um, and uh, the, the control, we, again, we compare mobility restriction and, and uh, uh, lockdown and uh, secure social interaction. Uh, so, uh, sorry, yes. Sorry. Fouad, sorry yes. to interrupt, but you still have 10 minutes. Uh, no, that would be fine. That would, thank you very much. Okay. okay. So here you see the non-therapeutic interventions. Uh, if we introduce secure social interaction, it means that we reduce the uh, uh, infectivity, but we do not reduce the number of the mobility of restriction, of uh, the restriction, not restrict the mobility of, uh, of the people. So, if you have uh, this uh, V3 for uh, uh, securing social interactions, then it means that V1 uh, it disappears in this case. It's equal, equal to zero. V1 is for mobility restriction. So either one or the other, not both, okay? V2 is uh, effort for isolating contaminated people. A2, A3 are concerned here. Here, uh, if you have mobility restriction, it means that you reduce the number of remaining susceptible uh, that uh, are outside and also, if again with lockdown, you reduce the number of asymptomatic people. Those people, those are contaminated, are already isolated, are not concerned actually with the, by this measure. If you do not introduce lockdown, V1 is equal to disappears equals zero, but V3 is strictly positive. And then these two uh, options are described in here. Okay. Then you see for uh, symptomatic cases, Evolution is dependent upon the parameters are introduced before, and also the fact that we can actually uh, we can uh, care uh, with uh, some cases. We can actually uh, uh, provide with some uh, some health care to some uh, symptomatic cases, and this is given by Z the uh, a treatment effort uh, multiplied by X the healthcare infrastructure, which is actually dependent uh, upon this state equation. It, it was over time, so that's endogenous healthcare infrastructure. This Z times uh, X times O is actually the treatment capability, okay? Z is for treat treatment effort, X is for uh, healthcare capability, uh, healthcare uh, capability or healthcare infrastructure, and the uh, multiplication of the three is the, uh, uh, the uh, treatment capability. Okay, so U is of course a control variable, and then you have here uh, this evolution of uh, convalescent, uh, which actually is, uh, also dependent upon the, upon the healthcare, uh, the treatment capability. Then again, with the A dot, uh, the state equation for the remaining steps. Okay, objective function now, we have uh, two, three kind of costs. Disease-related costs, 
which are given here, which are given supposed to be linear, uh, and where actually the cost of symptomatic people, uh, marginal cost of symptomatic people is greater than that of convalescent, which is greater than that of asymptomatic. And we have the cost disease related debt uh, of disease related debt, which is all given here. And uh, well, there is no, uh, this subscript is, uh, is not uh, here, I supposed to be here. But we suppose that D is larger than the, the, the D is larger than C2, C2 being the marginal cost of symptomatic cases. Control related cost is given here, and we use, uh, of course, convex increasing functions. And we introduce some uh, simple assumptions, which means here that simply that the cost of lockdown is marginal cost of lockdown uh, is greater than that of uh, securing social interaction, which is greater than that of, uh, uh, sorry, of uh, here. Uh, yeah, uh, greater than isolation effort. And finally, some salvage values for the number of uh, sick people at the end of the planning horizon, number of dead at the end of the planning horizon, and the level of the health infrastructure at the end of the planning horizon. So we need to account for social, for popular discontent. And this actually is based again on the fact that we have ill preparedness and uh, uh, lack of benevolence of the policymaker. Ill preparedness is simple to characterize. It, it depends on the uh, initial value of X, actually, X zero. Okay, if it is small, you are not prepared. If you are, you are, it is large, then you are okay. Uh, uh, the other point uh, regarding the lack of benevolence is related to D and M. D and M actually are the marginal uh, cost, param uh, cost uh, parameters for uh, disease related uh, death and for uh, the, the, the sick people, the symptomatic cases, act, uh, sorry, the, excuse me, the, the salvage value of uh, lives lost. Okay, so you see, if it is too low, then there will be a problem. If it is high enough, it will be a problem, it means that, that we have a lack of benevolence. And we, if it is high enough, then it would be okay. So you see this compounding function that I told you about is related to the fact that, uh, uh, we have popular discontent because we have this policy policymaker inability uh, to control the disease. So it comes with policymaker inability. I mean, in prepar ill preparedness and lack of benevolence of the policymaker. So R1 is actually a, a parameter for popular discontent. If R1 is equal to zero, we have popular neutrality, okay? Then for social fatigue, that's the same. We introduce this, but ap apply to the cost, uh, the, to the control related cost. And RZ, R2 is positive when there is social fatigue and it is actually equal to zero when we have social readiness, which means that the people are okay. They, they actually will, will, do the, do, will, will comply with the, with the non-therapeutic intervention. And then you see we have four cases that we consider depending on whether there is popular discontent and social fatigue. And the model is given in this way. It's not a simple model, of course. It took a lot of time to Eugene to, to find the solutions, but uh, it was done properly, uh, programming on C++. We introduced the epidemiological parameter values. I have five minutes, I suppose, and that should be okay. Really. So here you see, we make uh, some assumption regarding, and we uh, again we comply with the previous uh, uh, inequality, uh, equal inequalities that we assumed before, and then uh, we we uh, we have actually um, our grid of analysis is that we consider uh, the different cases when there is lack of benevolence. It means that we have small d and small f uh, m. Sorry, d is being equal to the is the the, the cost, marginal cost of uh, uh, life, lives lost. And this is uh, uh, over time, this is uh, the, the related to the salvage value. And uh, you see here, this is the case where we have uh, a reputation of benevolence of the policymaker. Why? Because uh, actually we have it uh, greater, much greater than in this case. So it's a kind of sensitivity analyzed based on some theoretical assumption. The same for R1, R1, R2. We suppose that uh, they are symmetric to make it uh, easy to, uh, to not to have one uh, more uh, impactful than the other. And then we consider these uh, seven scenarios that we compare with uncontrolled case, okay? And controlled case. And uh, of course, in this case, we have to take into account also the fact that maybe we have a scenario with, where the po population is discontent, but the a policymaker does not uh, uh, value this discontent, 
and uh, that's that's also an important thing. Okay, so here let me go directly to this. You see here the treatment treated cases. Uh, this is for a policymaker which is both well prepared and both has a, a reputation for benevolence. This in red is for actually the uh, policymaker inability, and in yellow policymaker inability, but without popular discontent. With uh, actually this is with. Uh, popular neutrality. So the policymaker is not able to, to counter the disease, but the people are okay. They are kind of docile, uh, in fact. So you see um, here, for this is for mobility restriction, a policy option. This is for secure social interaction. And the difference, we have uh, two curves you see here. One is for social uh, uh, readiness. Uh, the blue one is for social readiness and the other for social fatigue, you see. And it is more visible, the difference between the two curves is more visible under secure social interactions, okay? So we actually characterize simply the these three effect, uh, a popular policymaker inability, uh, popular discontent and social fatigue. We can see that clearly pop popular discontent is to, to some extent therapeutically beneficial to symptomatic cases. But it means also that when you have a, a policy in a maker's inability case, then uh, uh, if the populace are discontent, the only way to, to handle the situation is actually to try to catch up with healthy infrastructures. So you see the point, the, the counter negative counterpart is that popular discontent lessens the leveraging of non-therapeutic uh, instruments. And uh, this means that less prevention. And uh, this has, of course, also uh, the social fatigue also has an impact, on, a negative impact on this. <clears throat> okay, uh, I turn isolation effort is the same. Uh, so what we can see here from this table, these are cost related, co uh, control related cost structures for the seven cases, uh, six cases, sorry, because the uncontrolled case is not considered. We have inability effect that leads to privileging health infrastructures uh, to the detriment of treatment effort. So this is to catch up with ill preparedness of the policymaker. We have social fatigue, which leads to less preventive and more creative policy. And uh, uh, actually the most important lever in this case is isolation of manifestly infectious cases. This was not actually very well uh, followed in many cases. So I will skip this and go to cumulative infections. You see here, uh, what we see is that inability effect is uh, prevalent and uh, the same for social fatigue. It actually leads to, to uh, increase uh, uh, infections in an important way, uh, but uh, social fatigue is less perceptible. Uh, sorry, this discontent effect is less perceptible than social fatigue. Now for lethality, this is important. You see inability effect of the policymaker can have actually a, a very strong impact on lethality. It can increase actually the, the, the CFR of by 70%, 70%, it's a lot. Okay, and um, you see that actually the discontent, popular discontent will mitigate this inability effect on mortality, which means that actually it's somehow uh, salutary in terms of mortality to have people unhappy with the way that uh, the things are managed. Okay, so we can see that uh, uh, here the social fatigue has not so much impact, small impact, but not very significant on, on these various scenarios uh, related to, to lethality. Now social cost. Social cost shows clearly that if you uh, seek to, if you actually decide to, to make uh, savings by being uh, um, ill-prepared and lack of benevolence, uh, actually you will not make so much saving. You cannot save so, too much money from this actually. It is very costly to, to follow American or Brazilian uh, uh, policy in fact. It is uh, almost, all, all, almost uh, uh, as uh, uh, costly than, than uh. and this is for preventing prevent uh, prevented infections and uh, inability effect here leads to the prevention of fewer infection at higher cost so uh, um, we have also uh, uh, no impact on prevention of uh, discontent effect and then the fatigue effect has an impact both on effectiveness and efficiency in this case let me turn quickly on uh, comparison between, I have one minute, one, one and a half minutes, uh, uh, comparison between a lockdown and secure social interactions. The cost you see here, the, for the various uh, cases, the costs are almost the same. You cannot make any saving by choosing to, 
to to have to lack of benevolence or to be ill prepared. So that's not an economic. The economic trade-off is not is not very good. Effectiveness here means that actually uh, the rate of prevented uh, infections. What we see is that simply secured social interaction is the most effective, more than lockdown, actually, in preventing uh, infections. Uh, the same for efficiency. Efficiency is in terms of cost. Actually, secured social interaction is more efficient than lockdown. Okay. And then uh, here in saving lives, you see the differences are not that important, but we have similar effectiveness for the prevention of death between uh, lockdown and, 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 uh, and uh, secure social interaction. In terms of efficiency, it is less costly in general to have uh, uh, secure social interaction than uh, lockdown. I will uh, finish simply by precising that uh, compared to well-prepared and highly relevant policymaker, the disease-related lethality is considered uh, considerably higher uh, and uh, by more than two-thirds in terms of lethality and only leads to modest saving in terms of uh, overall social cost, less than 7%. So you lose a lot of people, you don't make so much saving. That's not a very... Um, but the, the other important result lies with the fact that we have quite similar results, uh, costs in between lockdown and secure social interaction. Uh, and, uh, and we can actually, the only point is that we more, prevent, more effectively prevent infections with secure social interaction. We actually uh, compared in uh, this, these options uh, in the case where we have a more, more widespread epidem epidemic and it, it's actually the, the same result. So uh, what can be said here is that either mobility restriction or uh, secure social interaction, uh, the second one is probably uh, uh, more effective and, uh, and, and more efficient in general in most cases. I will stop here. Maybe there are questions, and maybe uh, 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 I can I can respond. Thank you very much. Sorry if I thank, was a bit. Thank you, thank you, Fouad, for this uh, presentation. Uh, very uh, dense presentation. We mm -hmm. have uh, fifty-seven slides full. I wonder how long is the paper. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Everything was uh, perfectly clear. We we have uh, four five minutes for for questions. So please, if someone would like to raise. Uh, uh, George, I have a question actually. Uh, uh, what did uh, did the model assume uh, instantaneous observability of asymptomatic? Uh, people, for example, because testing. Oh, my name is Roland. Yeah. In, ca in case uh, you did not recognize his voice. <laughs> uh, but I see his name. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay yeah. Yes. Here, uh, yes. If you yes. Can help. Okay. Yes, right. we need we need to make uh, this simplifying assumption because what we wanted to avoid is a large scale model actually. Okay. But, uh, that's right. That's right. We uh, we could have actually more categories and. Uh, uh, it, there might be a lag, uh, time lag between the, the yeah, of course. The, the, that's the thing because testing is absent in in the picture, right. and, and right. of course testing is what what allows you to identify the sources and quarantine and you know all these things. So mm -hmm. uh, but for, of course, for many months, sorry, hold on. For many months, uh, we didn't have much tests actually to be to ensure that. Uh, so we we simply uh, apply the rule that if someone looks sick with fever and some symptoms which are close, to, then we we it should uh, it should be isolated or it should uh, eventually if uh, uh, someone is sick should go if uh, really sick should go to the hospital. So for many months we we didn't have this uh, possibility to to test. In many cases uh, even so the tests were so we had to apply some precaution principle in some sense but now we know better the we know better the symptoms of this uh, it's not a flu actually I mean, most people don't have a, a problem with the a nose uh, uh, problem with them the, the five persons only uh, most of the time the, the symptoms are clear for more than 80 percent fever headache uh, tiredness and uh, that's um, more or less that's what we that's, that's quite clear yeah, okay. but you're right, of course, of course. 
Just, just a little bit of a remark on that. Yes, testing is definitely important to include. If the problem with testing is, first of all, uh, tests are quite unreliable, actually. Uh, there are cases where people have been tested three times negative and then four times positive. Uh, that's a one issue. But even if you include the testing, you would have to have instantaneous results because there is yeah. no... Any anytime you put a delay in the system, yeah. that's yeah. going to create problems in solving. Yeah, yeah. So the, the difficulty is the delay. Yeah. Observation, instantaneous everything model. Okay. Uh, anything, anything, anything more than that would require it to be a, a, a large model. And then the question is the data. We don't have all the data that we we, we have. A, our data is between ad hoc and some kind of a rational way of trying to get some data. But mm -hmm. if you really were to do this model for a, for a use in the system, you would really need to have lots and lots of data to calibrate the model. And I don't think we have the resources to do that. Okay, thank you, thank you. Any other questions? If not, I have one for you. You started by showing a graph for different countries. Now that you have done the study, what can you conclude about the policies that have been followed in these different countries? Can you shed a light on their policies given the control model that you have now? Can yes, something uh, be, be said? Yeah, of course, uh, what can be said is uh, actually that uh, uh, in, in it is easy to recognize uh, 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 ill preparedness. Actually, you see that uh, during the, uh, the, the, the their main policy is to catch up with, I mean, to try to, to, to keep uh, the infrastructure at the right level. And this is um, uh, my point is what I would say simply to make it uh, short, it's that uh, in this um, kind of um, situation, one should not uh, uh, try to, to, to seek for, uh, uh, for economic um, uh, approach, which means that you should not actually seek to make saving uh, regarding the, this problem because you actually, you, you do not make any saving. So um, what I, uh, what what is um, clear that uh, this this is uh, this is something which you cannot um, you cannot uh, let this kind of problems uh, apart and not being well prepared is not an option not uh, valuing losses of lives is not also an option and this is something which is uh, quite important for the other uh, the rest you cannot also say, okay, it's uh, due to the fact that the people that do, they do not behave, they are, they, they behave in a, in a, they do not comply with the rules because of social, it's not enough to explain the, the number of that. So I think that the responsibility lies mostly with the, the policy makers uh, in preparedness and lack of benevolence. Um, and that's, uh, that's uh, the reason. So, um, uh, well, uh, that's I could what I could say. Most of the results, that, most of the problems that we have here are related to that, in fact. But it's not uh, it's not the main. Uh, I mean, this is a personal view, but maybe Suresh or Eugene have different perspectives. Uh, my own uh, my own answer would be that in order for us to do a difference between the U.S. and New Zealand, would require us to find out the cost parameters uh, that would be that are definitely different. I mean, in the Trump era, you know, the, the value of the life is not that important. So uh, my own view is that you need to get more handle on what kind of cost the, the particular country is, 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 is putting into their, their objective function. And that would drive the result of one country versus another. And we, we did not do that. Don't have the data for that anywhere. Okay, so uh, last call for questions, comments. My comment is the following. The model could be used uh, as it is because it is rather well calibrated. If you want to change something like, for instance, the R0, then it's uh, easy to, to make uh, the right adjustments and the model could be useful for other, I mean, it could be extended easily. 
uh, including for differential game uh, model like this chart. Oh, the, this, this is uh, a big challenge to move it to a mm. game with the number of parameters, state variables, and all what you have in the model. And I, I would not do it anyway, personally. Okay, guys. So thank you very much for attending uh, today's seminar. Thank you for that. For thank you very much for inviting. And, uh, hope to see you all uh, next week. Thank you. Thank you.